Ladies and gentlemen, there's a fascinating rumour that Morpheus, also known as Zen 6, is going to be increasing the core counts for the CCDs. So we will see CCDs with 8, 16 and finally 32 cores. Now, obviously, Zen 6 is quite some time into the future. Zen 5 hasn't been officially revealed by AMD. Well, we have seen some teasers here and some slides there, but it's not exactly a full breakdown of what we can expect for Granite Ridge and other products. This is going to change at Computex. AMD have also uh, stated just very recently, actually, we will see all of the high-performance desktop products revealed from them at uh, Computex. And later this year, we will see the Hot Chips Conference, which they will be attending, uh, along with other major vendors, of course. And at Hot Chips, AMD will be giving us a deep dive into Zen 5. And I'm actually really excited for this because, quite frankly, there is a lot of conflicting information for Zen 5. And it's going to be nice also for us to get a better understanding of the strengths and weaknesses of the architecture. Because when you kind of figure out, okay, this is what it's strong in, this is what it's weak in, you can get some level of understanding of what AMD will be looking to improve for the next generation. But let's move now back on to Morpheus and expand things a little bit with Medusa as well. So for those unfamiliar, uh, while Morpheus is the code name for the Zen 6 as kind of just an overall architecture, in other words, the CPU cores, so to speak. Medusa is the code name for the client. So this would be for Ryzen CPUs. Now, this is not uncommon knowledge at this point, but I'm just going to quickly mention, if you're not familiar, basically, at the moment, things are handled a little differently versus what the future is going to hold for Ryzen. So basically, in the future, AMD are going to be essentially unifying their strategy for both desktop and also laptops. Now, this doesn't mean that you're going to be able to take, let's say, a desktop processor and plonk it into, well, an ultra-thin laptop, because obviously there's going to be some socket incompatibilities. But in terms of the overall, you know, the die, the, the actual the IOD, the socket itself, there is going to be a lot more commonality compared to what we have now, and that's obviously going to be very important. It's going to be essentially, I guess I could say, a lot more Intel-like in their strategy. So, does that mean that since the CCDs of Zen 6 are going to be 8, 16, and 32 cores, that we're going to see, let's say, 32 core Ryzen CPUs? Well, I don't exactly think that AMD would want to go to 32 cores for Ryzen uh, for a single CCD because in theory, if they've got two CCDs, that would mean up to 64 cores for the Ryzen lineup of processors. And I'm sure we can all agree that that is not very likely. With that said, I guess it's marginally possible we could see 32 cores. That, of course, would be two CCDs of 16 and 16. But let's just put a pin on that for just a second. Now, if we, uh, because I think it's very important for us to realize that it's most likely that the 32 cores, at least what I've been speaking to for a couple of sources, the 32 cores are most likely going to be Zen 6C. So these are the dense cores, and these are not new. We've seen Zen 5 dense and so on. And essentially Kepler L2 and also Instlat X64, I hopefully I've pronounced that correctly. They are basically providing us a lot of deeper dive into the core counts for the next generation of products. And you can see them on screen yourself. So my personal opinion, this 32 cores is almost certainly going to be the dense variant of Zen 6. But let's now move back to the Ryzen lineup. Now, personally speaking, again, I don't think we're going to be seeing 64 cores for the uh, Ryzen lineup. I guess it's somewhat possible that 32 cores, I have heard from one source that there is a possibility they could be increasing the core counts, but frankly, I'm not super convinced about that. The rumors that I've heard basically are that uh, Zen 6 is gonna be remaining on the AM5 platform. And given AMD's official comments that they expect AM5 to be lasting for absolutely ages, I think that this is quite logical. 
Um, and basically, Orac 29, uh, I'm just double checking the date. Uh, yeah, very early this year, uh, early January of this year, they teased Medusa and they stated that it's going to be using a 2.5D interconnect with much higher bandwidth. Now, obviously, this is not a full breakdown from AMD officially, but from what I've been speaking to people anyway, this does seem to be pretty accurate. This is what we're going to be seeing for Ryzen on the desktop as well as the mobile, essentially. And this is going to be helping in a lot of different ways. So first of all, chip to chip bandwidth, which is quite helpful if you have like CCD1 and CCD2. So let's say uh, one of the cores has a bunch of data in its cache and it needs to access, and another uh, CCD needs to access some of that data, then it's going to be a lot nippier. So basically you're going to have a lot, I wouldn't say exactly a unified cache, as in, let's say, all of the L1 is suddenly going to be unified across the entire thing. That's not obviously realistic. You're still going to have higher latency, you know, versus, let's say, a core that's local. But at the same time, it's going to be considerably better than what we have now. Honestly, I haven't a huge amount of information regarding the cache system itself and how AMD are going to be handling, let's say, vCache and what the size of the cache across the entire chip is. But obviously, one of the rumors, one of the persistent rumors about Ryzen um, Granite Ridge, should I say, for Zen 5, is that basically it is quite bandwidth starved. It'll be interesting to see whether that is the case or not. And I will also be very interested to see what AMD does for Zen 6 going forward. Um, I think... The next generation of products from AMD is going to be very cool for Zen 5, I mean, obviously. However, Zen 6 is going to be almost setting things up for what we have in the future. Now, again, I don't think AMD are going to be moving to the um, AM6 or whatever platform anytime soon. I think Zen, um, I think Zen 6 is going to be remaining on AM5. But what I'll also add is there's another piece of news actually floating around at the moment, and this concerns LPDDR6 as well as just regular DDR6. Um, I was actually seeing this uh, floating around on Twitter earlier, and it was published by Darkmont. Now, I'm not going to read out all of this stuff because, well, it will take me a while if I was to verbalize all of this stuff, but essentially... What we have here is a massive increase in the memory bandwidth that is possible. So, for example, uh, if we pick on, let's just pick on DDR5 and 6 here, the DDR data rates. So, DDR5 is 4000 up to 8400 Gbps, whereas DDR6 starts at 8800 and it goes up to 17.6. And technically speaking, it's possible to go up to 21. Um, now, the initial draft is basically, well, happening now and uh, it's going to be lasting up to q2 2025 so again you know we're not going to be seeing ddr6 anytime soon and i think it's very likely that this is going to be um occurring in server products first because quite frankly i think the signaling and just the, the just this is going to be very difficult um let's just say that so it's going to be very interesting to see how uh, the market actually responds to this um just r.i.p to motherboard vendors i suspect but uh, anyway, guys, I think that's just about it for this particular video. I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.